few showers. Absolutely well matured. She knows every time we go to the koi dealer, what happens, love? I spend loads of money. Tempest just come in, a lot bigger than what I thought, but find some bits like you do. Oh, that's a nice koi. That one's got my name on it. Got to check out the main pond on the trophy drum. Hell of a bit of equipment. Backy showers. And in at 18,000 litres an hour. Come up as much as I can up to here. Have a look, see what's going on. Can you try to explain all of those pipe fittings, what I've got, get a bulkhead at three inch. I can pop that off after I flushed it, run a hose pipe in there. But yeah, I'm thinking basically, obviously I could only see the top of the skimmer there, but make sure that everything else will run out across here. Well, it is wet, it's cold, but I'm off to my koi dealer. The wife's trying to kill me the way she's driving, but uh, we're off to the koi dealer, only about 15 minutes from the house. And the wife ain't exactly happy because she knows every time we go to the koi dealer, what happens, love? You spend loads of money. I spend loads of money. And especially on what day is it? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Thank you, mother of the rabbit. So, just come up, add in some new fittings. I was going to show you quick as well. He has had the new Tempest just come in a lot bigger than what I thought but well I'm still having a go play with mine but yeah just up here having a little bit of a talk find some bits like you do you always need a few extra bits but well happy days Got some new coin here just having a look while we're up here some stunners in here. What size of that one? Look at these. Oh, that's a nice koi. That one's got my name on it. Little Benny Kicker Cory. never look at fish when you're buying pom parts because you end up falling in love with something that's a quality koi as well currently bringing on all these don't know if you guys remember last time I was here all doing fantastic look over here Load of his own fry. The koi dealer brings on his own fry here. These will be looking good in the spring. I'll come back and show you what they look like. Sorry about the glare, but yeah, they're doing really well to be fair. All right then, so uh, while we're here, got to check out the main pond. Absolutely stunning pond. A couple of you guys might have seen this pond before. Roughly around 8,000 gallon, 20 foot in length, I think, something like that, 20 foot in length. It's almost 20 foot square, I think. Might have any calculations wrong there, but Chris, the owner, just gone out. As you can see, runs his pond off drum, on the Profi drum, hell of a bit of equipment. Open this one for you. Need a bit of a clean out. You see, two backy showers, absolutely well matured, flowing three inch pipe direct from the drum, feeding up. I think that's running at 18,000 litres an hour. Feeding this side and then 18 feet 
thousand feet in the opposite side. Got some ferns in his backy shower as well. Help out with water quality. But the media inside of them are so well matured. Part of the reason why this water is crystal, crystal clear. But this is my favorite pond. I do come up as much as I can up to here, have a look, see what's going on and uh, try to get involved and just find out information about how things are done and how, thing, how Chris does things as well. But uh, it is an absolute stunning pond. And it is winter time, but inside of here, this whole room is about 22 degrees, 23 degrees, and the pond's currently sat roughly around 18 to 20 degrees. Still feeding eight times a day, and they're doing absolutely amazing. But yeah, I'm just gonna have a little bit of a chat with Chris a minute, and uh, well, I shall see you when I get back home and I'll run through some of the bits and pieces that I got. But look at the size of that chag, man. That's the favorite one. He always says, have you come up to buy the chag yet? And I said, I haven't got my new pond yet. <laughs> but yeah, stunning, look at this one. Absolutely quality. Chris is a breeder down at ACM Koi in Devon and he's very reasonable in price. And he's also a top quality bloke, full of information about koi. So that being said, let's crack on home. And uh, well, I'll see you when I get home. Happy, happy days. Obviously the wife might uh, have me pants down if she finds out what I've bought today and how much these pipe fittings have just cost me. But there we go. See you when I get back. Right then, so uh, back home, just got me new bits and pieces, stuff I need. Probably going to need another length of pressure pipe as well, but I thought I'll get one for now. I'm probably going to go up and get some more, but I'm just playing around with some ideas and see how things work. Recently, I had the ball valves over here. I'm as honest as they come. I got the wrong ones. So these are not pressure ball valves. These are just waste ball valves, which I'm going to use them for another project. I've actually got the pressure ball valves now. A little bit more expensive. The difference in them is that with the Evolution Aqua ones, and there's probably different ones available as well, is that the two inch pipe can fit directly inside of there and then it can get glued using your solvent weld cement. With the ones that I've bought over here, I don't know why they make it like this, but you buy a two inch ball valve, but you can't fit a two inch pipe inside of it it doesn't fit bought some sleeves because i thought maybe that would be an option this side fits i can get that in but then my two inch pipe that i have i can't get my two inch pipe on that either it just doesn't go there's no way in hell that that will fit onto there without warming up this pipe and trying to get it on there and i just thought I've got another project for these, so you can use a rubber boot and you can use it for a rubber boot for a waste pipe. But I've basically, I've, I've gone through the whole of my toolbox of all of my pipe fittings. Like in here, I've, I've been buying stuff along the way. Whenever I see something cheap, I buy it. And then like, this is all four inch rubber boots, four inch 90s. But I got an absolute bargain off of eBay. Someone was gonna build a pond and then they decide not to. Obviously this wasn't cheap, but this is an idea I've got at the moment. A skimmer, the idea behind this skimmer that I'm, I've got, the flow on it's restricted. That's supposed to be a two, two inch hole, where it's, it's nowhere near a two inch hole. It's got a two inch pipe work on the end. It is, it's got a screw thread on the inside of it to allow for hose tail to go on because everyone uses stuff in a different way. Well, what I'm gonna do is get rid of this altogether, get rid of it. I am thinking about putting a three inch because I've just got out all of my old pipe fittings. I am thinking about running a three inch off of this because I'm sure the reflow, what I'm planning to do is gonna be restricted through the size of the hole. So what I have got, I've got a two inch bulkhead. The diameter over that is definitely a lot more than what it is being the thickness of this and restricted. Oh, it's only actually an inch and a half. 
if I put a bulkhead on it like this, that's a straight two inch bulkhead, so the flow will be more. This is spare. I'm thinking about maybe possibly buying a three inch, but I'm also restricted with a three inch of how far, if you imagine this is, it's hard to explain, but because of the, the rim around the outside where you need to connect it, I'm just a little bit concerned. I'm gonna order one up and just have a play, but just see, see how the screw holes are in the way there with those little knobs in the way. I'm just debating whether a three inch hole in there will be possible or not. I'm hoping it will be because the plan is to run the skimmer off of a three inch line. So as the skimmer hits against the side of the pond, it's horrible and wet out there, but I'm just playing around guys because it's winter, it's boring and I just want something to do. Bit of a project, I can't build my new pond this year. So I'm just gonna upgrade what I've got and just get rid of all of my pipe work on the pond, which I've always ever used, I don't know if you can see the flexi fittings and, and it's just not man enough. I've never had a leak, but it always crosses my mind. If I ever have a leak, it will always go on the, that flexi pipe. It's cheap for a reason. So I'm gonna redo the whole pond this year in pressure pipe. You see, I've got all a load of fittings and bits and pieces like that. I've got all of these fittings to allow my pump to be outside of the pond. These fittings ain't cheap, guys. They can be used over and over again, but they are not cheap. One fitting like that is roughly around 20 pound in money. Well, without me doing the YouTube, there's no way that I could afford to do this at the moment. So I do appreciate everyone who watches my videos because everything that I get from YouTube, I put back into the, uh, back into the channel, back into the pond, and just try to do upgrades. What these allow you to do is screw this. If you've got a Evolution Aqua Airy pump, what you can do is screw that into the pump itself. And then it allows you, if you ever get a problem with your pump, or if you ever get, you need to do maintenance on your pump, or the pump fails and you need to buy a new one, you don't have to replace all of your existing pipe work. You can literally just unscrew the union and then you can carry on from there a lot of people already know that but the people that don't it'll be very useful because me myself personally i've always ever used i have used hard pipe i have used pressure pipe on certain things certain fittings but 90 percent of my ponding and stuff i've done over the years has always been cheap run-of-the-mill flexi pipe which it works, you can get pressure flexi pipe, which is better than the standard pond stuff, but anyone new to the pond hobby, anyone new to the to the game, this is something that you'll recognize because it's all they sell in the aquarium centers and the garden centers. And it's when you're first into the hobby, it's what you think that that's what you need. Well, learning and going forward and moving forward, this stuff does you well to start with. It gets you involved in the hobby, but it always leads on to moving on to the proper and better stuff. Because I've got to have a bit of a tidy up, but as you know, I've still got, I've, I always keep everything. No matter what, I've, I've got airline, what I've bought. I've got uh, a bottom drain there, which is left over. I've got some air stones. I've got loads of bits and pieces here, guys, all of the time. And I've literally had a bit of a, bit of a shindig to see what I've got, what fittings that I've got. I've got old stuff from DIY projects that I've made. And I'm just trying to improve what I've got. Obviously, uh, the idea was to spend not much money. It's ended up spending quite a bit of money, but it's my hobby and I enjoy it. And it's cheaper than what it is to buy a new pond. And I'll be happy and it'll keep me busy and hopefully make a few improvements to the pond. Hopefully, we can have a bit of a play now and see how we get on. So I'm just going to try and explain what my ideas are and how it's going to work. I might have to play around with it when I actually get going with the fitting it all together, but I'll just run through the idea. So, we have the skimmer, which I do need to put this bulkhead in to allow this fitting to be a better size fitting, because it says two inch, but that hole's restricted. This will make it two inch. This plan might not work, and I might have to get a bulkhead at three inch, but it just means more money that I've got to spend to get another bulkhead when I'm gonna try this, because I've already got it. I'm hoping there'll be enough draw, but the idea behind it, the water will come in through the skimmer on the side of the pond wall. It will return. I did try to get swooping 90 bends, but they didn't have any, and I wanted to 
basically make it a gradual drop of water instead of a tight bend. So the idea of this will be the water will come in, it will come through the skimmer, it will run straight along the side of my pond wall. So as it comes in, it will run across the side of my pond wall. It will turn on a 90, which will turn the pipe down behind the back of my pond wall. It will have a ball valve, which will allow me to turn the system off if I ever need to do any maintenance and or flush the system out. Then it will be attached to a pump with my union valves, which I've got in place there. One for the intake of the pump and then one for the outtake of the pump. Then it will run through a 90 around the side of my pond wall. Then it will be connected to a rubber boot, two inch rubber boot. Then it will be inch and a half screw thread to a two inch sleeve fitting so I can put a rubber boot on it. The green mat is my UV, so it will run through my UV. Unfortunately, I've only still got the 55, Evolution Aqua 55. So it will run through the UV. Then it will run to another ball valve, which will allow me to turn the system off. Obviously, with the UV in place there, I'll need something to turn that system off there. If I ever need to, I can. I'll get to this in a minute. I will be able to drain it out. But from there, that will allow me to clean out the upflow filter. But the clean out system to clean out the UV will be on this ball valve. But from here, this will flow up to the pond. So the upflow filter will return back to my shower and it will run up through here. And then it will have a T connection on the end there with an end cap on. So if I ever need to clean this out, I can pop that off after I flushed it, run a hose pipe in there and clean out everything inside of what's there and it will clean all the way down through. And then from there, it will have a T, a 90 and an, another rubber boot 90 which will return to my shower. That's the plan, that's the idea. See if it works, if it does, if it doesn't. But me doing this, that means I can lose the skimmer in the pond and I can lose the pump in the pond. And hopefully it will make a few little improvements. It is a little bit pricey, all of these pipe fittings. At the end of the day, I enjoy the hobby. So if I can get it to work, if I can, then I'll try something else. And if I can, happy days. A lot of the parts that I've got here can be reused. I'm building a new pond eventually. Not sure when it's gonna be. I'm still saving. I'm spending a bit of money today, mind. So the wife ain't too happy. But, you know, you've got to have a bit of fun and it's something that I enjoy. It's a little project. It makes me mind think. And I'm just enjoying it at the moment, thinking that I'm gonna try to improve the pond and see if I can make it run any difference. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about at the moment, the pipe itself, the, the restriction of water running off two inch before it hits my pump. That's my biggest concern at the moment because the water itself will have to travel a long way on gravity only on two inch. And I'm a little bit concerned about that. The backup plan is to do this section to there in three inch and then run the rest off two inch. I've just got to see how this goes. I know it's the case of putting it together and then if it doesn't work, then I'll have to take it apart and do three inch. But if you go three inch pipe, it's even more money, even more expensive. And I'm hoping that I'll have enough flow for what I need. I've got a 20,000 liter an hour pump. I'm not planning to run nowhere near that. I'm planning only to run run that at no more than 40%. Don't want a massive turnover of water from it. I'm hopefully gonna be planning something else to turn over a few more gallons of water, but I haven't got a massive pond and I'm just playing around with, see if I can make this idea work. But the, my biggest concern about it is just getting that pipe. I know it would be better in three inch, if not four inch. I have seen a few videos of how people's customized these in the past. They've knocked this off, put an eight, eight inch rubber boot straight connected to this to four inch and run this whole pipe off four inch. So that there's an idea that I could play around with. Um, I have seen, the, the biggest thing is, is restricting on how I can get a bulkhead in there and get a perfect seal a two inch is gonna be no problem at all. See, they sell these Konoki Koi ones, whatever you call them, they sell them at two inch. So that hole there is supposed to be two inch, 
which if you had a two inch pipe fit in, you put it on and it's got loads of playing room. But the thing is, can you see the diameter of that and then the diameter of the screw thread inside and then it lips into the hole? The hole itself is only inch and a half. So I'm planning to put a two inch bulkhead on it, obviously open up that hole a lot more. And uh, well, you can see straight away, it's almost, you can see the, the size of it. I'm hoping that it might, it might make improvements, but I might be able to do this, the same idea in three inch. That's the, that's the next step if I, if I don't feel, before I glue anything up, before I, you know, I'm not gonna glue anything up at all until I'm happy with it. So even if it comes to me replacing this section, what I've got there in three inch, I won't glue anything up until I'm happy that it will pull the water that I want it to pull. Obviously, I'm gonna have to glue it to test that. I'm just gonna put it all in place, see if it see if it works to start with. That's what I'm trying to get at. See if it will work, what I wanna do, because I don't even know, I'm not even sure how much of a job it's gonna be. It's just playing around with. I know I've got a decent depth of behind there, which I can come out. I'm thinking about coming out. Let me open up here. It's a bit wet and horrible out there. But yeah, I'm thinking basically, obviously I've got that fence post there and I've got another one there. And I know when I put these in a good few years ago, I put a load of concrete around the bottom of it. So where I come out with the skimmer, the skimmer's planning to live as tight as I can get it, straight down here against the block work. Obviously dig everything away, make the trench and then fill everything back in on top of it. And I'll only see the top of the skimmer there but make sure that everything else will run out across here, across the side, all the way down the back of the pond, pump down in the bottom of the corner of the pond, all the bits and pieces going on through the UV, back up to the skimmer. That's the idea and uh, just see how we get on. So yeah, guys, loads of stuff going on there to be fair. Cracking day going up to see the Koi dealer as well. Chris is a lovely bloke down at ACM Koi. He's always happy to help people out and uh, he certainly helps me out. Got to admit though, don't get much discount for the amount of money I spend up there. But that being said, <laughs> well, I'm going to end the video here, guys, because I've got a load of things to sort out, load of things to sort out in my head, see if things work, and obviously stick around for future content because I am going to get this done and I am going to see if I can get it to work. It might work, it might not, but at the end of the day, it's a bit of pond work. It's going to take a few weeks before I can get out in the garden and sort it out anyway because, well, look at it out there. It's been hammering down with rain all day. It's pitch black already, and uh, well, I'm just about to go and give an evening feed to me koi. So on that note, I'll see you all soon. Happy ponding, look after yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.